In this video, I'm going to show you what happens when we update a variable within a loop. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to make a variable called number. I will have it hold the number one. Then I'm going to have a loop that says 10 times do end. And within the loop, I will say puts number. As you might predict, when we run the code, it prints the one to the terminal 10 times. But what will happen if on line four, I say number equals number plus one. As you know, that will increase number by one. Now, when we run the loop, it prints the number one, two, three, up to 10 in the terminal. And if you follow the code flow, you'll see that this makes sense. On line one, we create the number variable and have it store the number one. Then we begin the loop on line two. In the first round of the loop, on line three, we print the number to the terminal, which right now it's one. On line four, we then increase number by one, so now a number is going to be two. We hit the end on line five, which bumps us back up to line two to begin the second round of the loop. But now, when Ruby encounters line three and prints number to the terminal, since number is now two, it prints two to the terminal. And then on line four, number becomes three. When we begin the third round of the loop, line three prints three to the terminal, and so on and so forth until we print out 10 and finish the 10th round of the loop. Now I'm going to show you an extension of Peter Jig notation, which not just involves tracking the order of which each line of code runs, but we're also going to learn how to use this notation to track the values of variables at any given time. Let's start with simply tracking the code flow. To make this simpler, I'm going to reduce the number of times this loop runs to three times. Of course, now when you run the code, it simply prints one, two, three to the terminal. So let's begin adding the Peter Jing notation. Line one is the first line of code that gets run. Ruby then encounters line two. So that's the second line of code to get run. And then three, four, five. We then get bumped back up to line two. So six, seven, etc. We get bumped back up to line two for a third time. 10, 11, 12, 13. Let me show you how the extension to Peter Jing notation works for tracking variables. We start by adding comments below one line per each of the lines of code that get run above. So since we have 13 lines that get hit above, we're going to add 13 comments below, starting with the line number. So this represents the first line of code that gets run, and we're gonna do the same for all the lines of code. Let's make room for this. And while this seems tedious now, this will be especially useful as our code gets more complex. And you'll thank me for it later on. Okay, now we begin tracking each variable on each line. In this example, we only have one variable, the variable called number. So that is what we're going to be tracking. On line one, since number is one, we say number is one. On line two, since number is still one, we can use the ditto notation. On line three, we print number to the terminal. At this point, number is still one. It is unchanged. Now on line four, number gets increased by one. Now since right now number is one, when it gets increased by one, that means number is now two. On line five, that is the end keyword, so number is unchanged. Same for six, same for seven. Now line eight is where number gets changed again. And now number is three. On line nine, that's the end keyword, so we use the ditto notation. 
10, that begins the loop again. Number is still unchanged. On 11, we print number to the terminal, which at that point is 3. On the 12th line that gets hit, number is increased again. So number is now 4. Line 13 is the end keyword, so number remains the same. Having gone through this notation, we can actually see by the time the three loops finish running, number ends up being 4. However, 4 never gets printed to the terminal. Why is that? Because when number becomes 4 on the 12th line of code that gets run, all that happens after that is the ending of the loop. We never put number ever again. So while number ends up being 4, we never end up printing 4 to the terminal. So this is the full Peter Jang notation used for tracking both code flow and the values of variables at any given time. If you were to track multiple variables, you could simply use comma. So if you were to track another variable called x, we say number is 1 and x is whatever it is. Again, while this may seem a little bit tedious now, trust me, when your code gets complex and we will encounter such complex code, this is the notation that is going to save your skin.